True love. True love is really just gifting your power away to another person, knowing that they could totally destroy you, but trusting they won't. Here lies the intrinsic trouble with love and power. This is a story from my life of five rings I have owned. My first ring. When I was in kindergarten, I ate 180 Grand Slam breakfasts. I know this because my mom's new husband was a cook and picked me up every day after school on his break. He would clear a spot for me at the Denny's counter, return to the kitchen, and lovingly make me my favorite meal. From my seat, I could see him cooking, and his dark black skin made his big, beautiful smile appear to glow. My stepdad was strong, fearless, and a very, very good man, except when he drank. For my sixth birthday, he gave me a small gold ring. I was so excited. My love for him was sprinkled with my fear of him. When his drunken, unpredictable rumble of anger flared, I would hide under the living room chair while he dragged my mother across the floor. As I blocked out the screams, my ring looked extra shiny. My second ring. My grandfather gave my mother a gold ring when she was 16. She gave it to me when I turned 16. She had actually never really liked the gold ring from her father and she handed it over to me unceremoniously. I slipped it in my jewelry box and there it sat. When I contentiously moved from my mother's house, I was only allowed to take my clothes and that jewelry box my mother was displeased that I was leaving her and agreed only to come to my apartment months later because we were carpooling to a family event. Upon entering my house, she looked around, saw a ceramic jar, picked it up, looked it over, said, this is from my house, and put it in her purse. Fifteen years later, a fire leveled my mother's home. She was only able to escape the house in the pajamas that she was wearing and her jewelry box. Karma. My third ring. I'm bored, let's have sex, he said to me. We sat on the beach in fancy chairs that had barely fit in his shiny red sports car. He was 17, older than me, and Southern California beach surfer attractive. He spent most of his time bare-chested, flexing his chiseled, tan, pubescent body in anything and every reflective surface he encountered. <laughs> this boy had spontaneously given me a diamond ring the week before. He presented its certificate of authenticity and the insurance paperwork to me before revealing the ring clearly placing more worth on its monetary value than any sentiment of love. I was surprised by the ring. We had only been on a few dates. I took it, wore it, was bemused by his attention, but mostly by his wealth. I'm bored too. I'd like to go home, I responded to his lame beach proposition. Our entire relationship lasted six weeks before it was over. The grand finale was following a nice dinner. On the way home, he pulled the car over to watch the sunset, unbuckled his seat belt, and launched himself into the passenger seat, sprawled himself on top of me, and began thrusting. I laughed at his brandish absurdity and pushed him off. He was furious. I should have broken up with him. I didn't. I just didn't return his calls. 
In his final call, he left a voice message that said, you better call me back or I'll drive to your house and fuck the shit out of your dead body. I never talked to him again. I kept the ring, tossed it in my jewelry box. My fourth ring. The two mothers on the bleachers in front of me kept whispering and giggling under their breath. My new boyfriend was up to bat. His wavy dark hair stuck out under his varsity helmet, and when he turned around to check that I was watching, his gorgeous green eyes glistened. My boyfriend was athletic, kind, intelligent, and gorgeous. I studied his frame and a wave of passion came over me as I remember the night we made love for the first time, both of us young, with no experience. And it was perfect, tender, connected, respectful, storybook. Later for Christmas, we had brought promise rings together from the local pawn shop. The mothers kept giggling at him and now, upon figuring out I was his girlfriend, they were looking at me. What in the world could they be giggling about, I wondered. With a boom, my boyfriend smacked the ball and rounded thir third towards home base, and I saw it. I saw the reason for the giggles. His tight-fitting baseball pants and ill-fitting sports cup highlighted his massive, massive masculine blessing. With a huge grin, I stood up and cheered both for the home run and for my sexual good fortune. <laughs> he was a high school senior. I was a sophomore. He was leaving for college soon. We decided together to break up, not because we didn't love each other, but because we knew the things about long distance relationships. A few days before he left town, I stopped by his house he was still wearing his ring. I was too. The fifth ring. A new kind of love emerged. We had known each other since grade school. She was obsessive, she obsessively brushed her long red hair in class and I was mesmerized by her million freckles. The baseball playing boyfriend was gone to college and I was devastated. Teenage heartbreak had taken me over, and then she cavalierly rode in on a borrowed old tandem bicycle and rescued me. For over two months, we rode that bike six miles every day to the beach. We ate ice cream, sang REM songs, talked about how one day we would run, again, oh, run away together to Tennessee because the South was so attractively backwards. At the end of that joy-filled stint, I had a gnarly scar on my knee from one of our epic bike crashes and a new ring I had bought myself on a whim at a head shop on the boardwalk. It was silver, tarnished, bulky, and sent my boyfriend's promise ring to live in my jewelry box next to my stepdad's tiny gold ring, the ring from my mother and my surfer's diamond ring. I wore that new ring for 10 years. The trouble with love and power is the tangled way they whirl together. Because true love is really just gifting yourself away, gifting your power away to another person, knowing they could totally destroy you, but trusting they won't. Love is messy. And power is taking that mess and weaving everything broken together to make something worthy of the world. A few years ago, I handed over my four gold rings and my tarnished silver one to a jewelry artist and asked her to melt all the gold ones together in the image of the silver one. I asked her to weave me a gold ring parachute out of the messy, lovely moments of my life, to make my jagged life pieces whole, smoothed, and honored. This is the ring I wear now. This is my life now, knowing this messy world could end me, but trusting it won't.